In this video, I'll be showing you how to add the finishing touch to your photo manipulation artwork using the totally awesome yet underappreciated camera raw filter in Photoshop. With this tutorial, you'll learn how to pull out the details, tweak the lighting and get rid of artifacts, all guaranteed to improve your final piece. Hey guys, it's Dean here. I'm a pro horror artist from the UK and you're tuned into photomanipulation.com. If you're new here, welcome. We're not your typical Photoshop channel, we specialise in photo manipulation, digital art and advanced Photoshop techniques. If that sounds like your kind of thing, be sure to like and subscribe as we put out new videos Monday to Friday. It's free, easy and really supports the channel. Let's roll the video, enjoy. Okay, so this one's just a quick tip for you today and I thought I'd mention it in a walkthrough tutorial because I believe the camera raw filter is a very underappreciated and underused function in Photoshop. If you're not familiar, the camera raw filter can be accessed via filter, camera raw filter. Within the Photoshop interface, um, I believe before it was um, a Lightroom exclusive feature and then in a later version they included it as a standalone filter in Photoshop. I was a bit late to the parade with this one in terms of using Camera Raw. It's only since I saw one of my buddies using it that I decided to use it and now it's a major part of my own workflow. Now this isn't a drilled down step by step covering every single feature and function of the camera raw filter in Photoshop. All I'm going to be doing is showing you how I typically use camera raw from time to time to finalize and add the finishing touch to my artwork, my book covers, my commissions in Photoshop. Now there's a word for this if you're not familiar it's called global processing and that's where you've done all your main compositing, color effects, lighting effects, whatever and you do a process to the global scene so that's everything usually it's a stamps layer at the top of the layer stack so a stamps layer there's a shortcut for this command alt shift and e and if you're on a windows that will be control alt shift and e and what that does is that creates a stamps layer at the top of the layer stack it, it basically takes a stamp or a photograph of the entire thing and spits out everything on its own layer. Very handy, I use that all the time. So we're just going to start with this unprocessed version here and this is before we've done anything with camera raw. This piece is a book cover that I did for Matthew S. Cox, Wayfarer AV494 and this one was a sci-fi horror piece and you can see a very small mood board here. You can see the, the backlit scene, the small figure. I use mood boards all the time. Um, there's a dedicated tutorial on mood boards, really handy for you guys who are interested in commercial art. To so check that one out, um, huge part of my own workflow and you can see how these inspirations carried over. So the audience, the readers looking at this book cover, they can instantly identify that this is part of the sci-fi horror genre. Okay, so on with the tutorial. I'm gonna hide that type layer. We have a stamped layer here titled unprocessed. And to create that, again, that shortcut, Command, Alt, Shift and E if you're on a Mac. Control, Alt, Shift and E if you're on a Windows PC. So we have this stamped layer here. Now then, filter, camera raw filter with that stamped layer active. Now the good thing about camera raw filter is that it's fast. You can get stuff done really, really fast, um, especially good if you're on a deadline. Now I'm zooming in using command and plus and command and minus. That's an easy way to zoom in. And like in the main Photoshop interface, you can hold down the space bar to pan around. So. The first thing you can do, if you're not familiar with camera raw filter, these are the basic kind of processes you can do. Exposure, contrast, highlights, shadows, whites, blacks, clarity, vibrance, saturation. There's so many applications and uses for all of this stuff, but I'm just gonna show some of the processes that I typically go through. 
Now then, if you had any issues with your exposure, if you wanted things to be brightened up a bit, you could just go straight ahead and use the exposure slider. For the contrast, if you wanted to boost that or reduce that as per the piece you're working on, you can go ahead and do that. So I'm just going to make some minor adjustments to this one. So you can see how fast it is and see uh, these amendments in action. Highlights, you can tweak the highlights. Shadows. So I'm just going to do some basic amendments here. The whites, you can go a bit overboard with some of this. Some of it you only need a delicate touch. Blacks, I'm not really going to tweak with that one too much. Okay, I'm going to zoom in a couple. I'm going to use a space bar. And then when I press P, that shows the before and after. So I'm just going to come out. I'm going to go P. And you can see it's a little bit muted there, um, a little bit dull. And I'll go P, and that shows the camera raw changes that I've put into place there. Okay, so I'm going to continue. Um, vibrance and saturation, I personally don't use that often at all. So I'm going to leave them for now because I personally wouldn't use them in my workflow. Maybe the other guys on the team do, but I, I don't really do that. Now then, I've saved clarity for last because clarity is brilliant. It's like um, it's a, it's a little bit like an unsharp mask, but it is it gives a, a certain pop to the details. But it's really easy to overdo it. So if you go a bit too heavy-handed, you you can get um, like a what's the effect? Like a HDR effect, which can be a bit overkill. When you're using clarity, use it with a delicate touch. So around um, for this particular piece I want to pull those details out maybe I will go to 8 and leave it there and I'm using P to hide and show the before and after so I'm just going to go OK on that and in a very fast and a very straightforward manner I've improved the quality of this image from a fairly decent but dull image to something where the levels and brightness and the clarity is a bit more in tune with what I wanted for this piece. So that's one aspect of camera raw, just using the basic functions. Now if you're anything like me and you like to use oil paint processes from time to time, um, if you don't know about these processes there's a dedicated tutorial. I'll put that in the description below but if you have oil paint you can also use camera raw to work with this oil paint layer so I've made one already I won't go through the whole process because it's its own tutorial and we've already done that so for this one what I'm going to do is I have the oil paint layer active so that's a stamped layer again just one single layer filter camera raw Okay, so what you can do is go through those basic processes again. A little punch on the exposure, a little punch on the contrast, maybe pull some highlights, maybe a touch on the whites, maybe a small tiny touch on the clarity. And then another thing that's quite useful um, for camera raw are these sharpening. So on the camera raw panel, if you click on these two tri triangles, this takes you to sharpening. What you can actually use, um, I'm not going to use it for this demo, but see these artifacts left by the oil paint filter. You can often level them out by pushing the luminance to the right and then reducing the amount of detail. I'm not actually going to do anything for these ones, so I'm just going to do that and get rid of the luminance. But what is really useful for dealing with artifacts like this, generated by filters, um, you can see that there's these swirly patterns that looks it makes it look a little bit unrealistic. What you can do is go grain, and I use grain all the time. And there's a complicated word that I use for this. I call it homogenizing, and that's where it just levels out these artifacts. Now I'm going to zoom in real close using Command and Plus, and just push this grain to the right. Now, again, like the clarity, you can go over the top. So just keep pushing until those swirly artifacts have been knocked out. So about there just about does it, I think. 
around a 26 mark. I'm going to use P again, P, to hide and show before the camera roll. Command and zero to fit the screen. And then P, P, before and after. Now the grain's heavy handed on the face. That's a bit too heavy. So I'm going to pull that back loads. And it's only going to be the softest touch. We're going to go with 10. And we're going to hit OK. And there you can use the camera raw filter to homo homogenize and punch out the swells where necessary. I'm just going to step backwards. Um, my favorite sh shortcut for step backwards is Alt, Command, and Z. One final thing, I'm going to show you the unprocessed version. One final thing, if you just wanted that extra layer of sharpness after applying the clarity, you can go filter, sharpen, unsharpen mask. Again, it's really easy to go over the top with this. Radius, I don't push the radius ever really go too high because you do get that uh, wacky HDR effect. So about one for here. And then let's go to about the 70, go OK. And sometimes an unsharp mask just at the very end will give you that last little pull on those details. So that's it for this one, guys. Only a short, quick tip for you on how to use Camera Raw for your global processing and adding the finishing touch to your artwork. If you're interested in pursuing book cover art as a career, I've actually made a dedicated course on it. So be sure to check out a link to core skills in the description below. Thanks for tuning in today, guys. I'll see you at the next one. Catch you then.